So now we're in the machining section of the shop. Uh, this is where we have the majority of the milling machines that we use for both slotting guards or anything that needs a, a hole drill that's uh, gonna become a pommel uh, or something like that. Uh, so this is a Gorton milling machine. This is an old machine, it was made in 1954 uh, for the Navy originally. It's a very high quality machine. It's got a riser block here that actually lifts the head a little bit higher. A little easier if you're standing. These machines are usually set up for a sitting position. Um, a little different than some mills in that it's got a handle here to allow you to control the back and forth for the uh, what we call the x-axis. Uh, high speed, auto down feed, auto cross feeds. Um, so it's a pretty nice machine. Um, kind of rare, but, but you can find them if you really hunt for it. Uh, this is a regular bridge port. Started out life as a manual machine. It was retrofitted by a friend of mine named Craig Kepner. Uh, Craig completely rebuilt this machine. Has ball screws, servo drives, fourth axis. You may have seen us in the show, like when we do the uh, katana. We do that, uh, that katana build where we do the rotation on the back for the uh, lightsaber. Uh, it does all that kind of work. It gets set up for a lot of different processes. Fullers, if we're doing multiple fullers, where they're stacked on the blade so that we don't have to reset the larger machines, we'll do all of that on here. We'll also use it if we're doing a curved fuller. So when you see fullers in our cutlasses and things like that, if they're a production piece where we don't need to just make one, we'll put it on this machine and it'll create that curved fuller using a ball end cutter for some things like that. Uh, it runs off of a regular older computer. I think it's a 386 that's uh, set up with Mach 3. So it's a uh, pretty old technology running on XP. Works like a champ, never, never really fails us. It's been a really, really great machine for us. So this is a, a 16 inch South Bend. It's also, once again, this is a pretty old machine. It's got you know, a flat belt drive inside. Uh, we'll take something up to 16 inches across. I've got it mounted with a modern Alorus tool holder set up. Fairly long, you can put something five feet between centers on this. It's about two horsepower, I think. Um, auto feeds, threading. You know, this gearbox allows you to set both the speeds and the thread type if you're doing threading for it, thread in both directions. Uh, not metric, this only works in standard. Um, here we've got, you know, toolboxes up against the wall. Once again, we're in our busy season, so stuff is super cluttered, but we're keeping busy, so it's really good. The vast majority of the fullers that you see come from the shop are gonna be done on one of these horizontal machines. This is a Sejo from the 1970s. It's a very high quality machine works really well. It's what they call a universal machine where the table can actually be rotated back and forth. Seven and a half horsepower motor, 50 taper in the top feed. Uh, we've got these braces which allow you to brace the bars so that they don't wobble around when it's making really aggressive cuts. Normally we're only cutting about 60 thousandths deep so we take very light cuts over a long table. Uh, in this case, this cuts about a meter long. Most American machines of this size will only cut 28 inches, whereas the European machines will cut a meter, and that gives us a little bit of extra on the swords. We're also retrofitting the machine on the opposite side here, which is a Greve Cincinnati, and that company stopped building things in the late 40s or early 50s. This machine, while it's about the same size, the table will actually travel almost 40 inches, which is gonna be very nice. It came into here set up with the wrong kind of motor system and a couple other things, we're actually giving serious consideration to completely retrofitting that to CNC the same way that the bridge port was done. Uh, and that's pretty much what we have here in the machine shop. We actually have another building with some larger machines that we're just starting to set up. But this is where everything that you've seen, this is where all that type of work gets done. If you've enjoyed watching the 360 video of the machine shop tour, make sure you check out some of the other videos where we go through the rest of the shop you can see how we do everything that way.